And here in this example is where we can apply what we've learned about the left area methods in the preceding video. So, so now formally we're given a normal, a standard normal distribution. And immediately as that uh, good habit I was highly recommending, draw for yourself a bell curve right here, getting ready for action. With center at zero and standard deviation sigma equals one and the values being arranged on this horizontal axis here is going to be the value of the random variable z. And so first question here is that how about part A of the example? Let's try to find the probability where z on this z chart here on this standard normal distribution right here, we want to find the chance, the probability where z is greater than or equals uh, about uh, 2.05. Okay, so once again, I only recommend at this point, start making a sketching on this bell curve right here because it will give you a planning of what to do. So all I see now is 2.05 is a value somewhere on this axis right here to the right hand side of zero of course and so being positive 2.05 is about here and so now according to the description we're looking for z being greater than or equals 2.05. So here's that cut and the area we shading here is supposedly now being to the right hand side of that and so now this question is nothing but just asking us to find the cumulative area but shade it to the right hand side from where this z score stands right here. Okay, and so we already learned that left area method can give us the area from where my 2.05 stands. Then we can use the left area method to find how big that area I'm shading in red is. So for that area in red, we can easily use technology. You can either use my LSND program, or you can use my, um, or you can, or you can use any other web resource, or the online tool, or the, the, any special computer programs to do that. So this left area to the left hand side, I'm going to use my LSND program, and 2.05 is the z score I'm providing to the program. And so now the area there, this area to the left is, uh, so let's make a label, a quick label on the graph right here, point, uh, and in a lot of decimals, uh, 979, 978178. Okay, and that looks pretty reasonable, but keep in mind this is not our answer. It's only the area in red right here that I'm on my picture and the area being shaded to the left hand side. So the actual area, now I only need to remind you one more the little step and, and, the end, and the victory is right around the corner here. The entire accumulated area on this bell curve including the red and the black together is totally one. And, and we're looking for our area here as being this little black area here outside of the, the red area. So the simple trick here, one is the total accumulated area of the bell curve. And I'm going to subtract this point 9798178, etc., etc., from one. And that's how I obtain my little area being shaded in black right here. So one minus point 9798178. Okay, and usually for writing out purpose, uh, usually uh, anywhere from six to eight decimal is good, and then your very final answer in each of these little steps right here, keep about six to eight decimals, doesn't have to go too long, but then uh, usually final answers, we can, we can uh, legally round to four decimals. So this final answer, calculation comes out being 0.02, O one eight two two. All right, and that's and it could be a lot longer, and that is our final answer. And then usually uh, for a lot of online assignments in these days, uh, online assignments are usually asking for the, 
uh, or many uh, textbooks are asking for rounding your final answers to four decimals. So this is about 0 0.0202. Okay, approximately, and that should be good enough. This is about 2.02 percent .02 of time we're gonna have a z-score being above or equal to 2.05, and that's another way to explain to interpret your final answer here. All right, so on that same bell curve, and of course in the same example here, let's look for, and I'm already having my my empty bell curve getting ready for action here, so let's answer another question. So how about, uh, let's find the probability where my z-score here is being anywhere greater than, and here I'm purposely skipping that equal sign to point out for everybody that the way to get the answer is exactly the same. How about I need z is greater than negative uh, 3.35. Example. Okay. And so, once again, immediately after writing down the question, the first thing we need to do is to make a sketch on the empty bell curve right here. Negative 3.35 this time must be, and what makes sense, somewhere to the left hand side of the center of the bell curve. And then from where that is, we are now looking for the, the area we shading is to the right hand side. And so, and you can see that, so now we've been interpreting any of these uh, probability as a, a shaded area, and the reason why having equality or without equality makes no difference in the way we're finding the answer here. Of course, you can find your uh, much more better explanation when you're at a, a higher level course in, in statistics, but here just think about uh, as an area, then whether we're including that thin line or we're not including that thin line, equivalent to having equal signs or not having equal signs, it will not really change the answers to this total accumulated area. And so in that way, feel free to work just like when we had uh, equal signs right here and, and, and run whatever the method that you, you have to do. But so here's the, the sketch of our shaded area that we are looking for. We really are looking for the area here in black. The left area method tells us that we can easily calculate this area to the left right here. And again, my SND program, or you can find this on many other uh, online resources, can also easily get you that value. So with my uh, LSND program in Microsoft Excel available in front of my screen right now, in, right in front of me right now, then I can go negative 3.35 just like that and hit enter. So now my left area, this small area right here, this little tiny weeny tail over right here is being in decimal value 0.0004041. And so now you can feel about how small that, uh, that probability is. And then once again, similar experience that we have had in, in question A, this area we're actually looking for in black here is not the area we just came out with the, the LSND program. It's actually the area outside of the, the red one. And so the trick for that, once again, 1 minus, so 1 is for the entire accumulated area inside any bell curve or inside this curve or inside any other bell curve right here. And we're subtracting the area to the left of our curtain Z score. And so that area to the left of our current z-score is 0 0.0004041. And so calculation now comes out to be, all right, so 0.9995959. Okay. And, so, and it could be a lot longer. But then as I said, usually many textbooks as well as uh, a lot of online assignments like web assigns or ymap or the many other the commercial online assessments programs these days uh, is asking for four decimals so in case you have to round it down to four decimals this answer is about approximately 0.9996 okay. or as an in, as a real time interpretation so in real time this as an interpretation right here, it, what it says that in reality when you are anywhere 
greater than the, a negative 3.35 z-score, then it takes 99.96 percent of time. So it's, it's definitely almost the entire bell curve. Like that. All right, so after reviewing the example here, then we can draw out a, a generality about uh, one situation right here. So anytime we are given a, an N01 or a standard normal distribution where the picture being displayed is as shown right here, and the problem is asking us to find that probability where our Z value is being greater than or equals to a value or a Z score a right here. So A could be on the left or A could be on the right hand side of zero anywhere descriptively. So I'll just pick A right here. But the idea is the area and we could be skipping that inequality. But the area is being fundamentally shaded to the right hand side. Okay. And so that generality I would like to point out is that the the way to find this, combined with our method we've learned, that so-called left area method, then we can use any online or technological tools, even my LSND program, to find this area to the left. And that's what I call the, the left area method. And so the solution for this kind of problem, where the area is shaded to the right-hand side, is simply just one for the entire bell curve, and we're going to subtract the area in red right here, which is uh, namely okay, the area left of A. And I'm writing that in red ink right here for you to see the correspondence between uh, that red area and this, how I'm writing it. This is the area to the left of A. And that's generally the, the the way to handle the problem when we are having a, an area that's shaded to the right-hand side. 